Yeah. Let's go. We just gotta go hard. Uh, I go the hardest. I bring the pain. All right, exciting morning here out on the Hawkesbury, my local. Got a couple of rods spooled up with the brand new J Braid Expedition. So super excited to give you the rundown on this braid. So join us out in the water, chasing a few estuary species and putting the expedition through its paces. So let's do it. Just tell me to get up, it's time to work. All right, so just pulled up at the first spot, complete wide out with the fog, can't, can't see more than about 50 metres in front of the boat, but we've pulled up to a set of racks here in the Hawkesbury. Uh, it's not something I do heaps here, but um, good test for the expedition braid. So we'll uh, grab a little risky critter and we'll start throwing around these poles, see how we go. start off. How's that to start off the expedition test? Maybe only fifth, fifth or sixth cast of the morning. Not a, not a huge fish but I don't know, that was good. <laughs> a little risky critter on a, this is a 120th head. That's one of the new colours that's just uh, been announced. So it's olive oil. Nice, um, kind of similar to a motor oil, but a little bit more green. Bit of a two-tone, kind of top and bottom colour. Really nice, um, really nice colour, one of my favourites. I should get, the, I should just get the net out to be honest. started getting into rack fishing in the Hawkesbury. All right, so just fishing some old oyster racks here. So it's it's towards the bottom of the tide. Ideally, we'd want a little bit more water. You can see the, the tide's quite low on the on the trays there, but so when the tide's lower, I like to fish kind of the outside edges where, you know, it's closest to the deeper water. So we'll fish up this um, washboard. So this is the outside edge. They've got that plastic wrap on the outside to stop the, the wash going into the rack. So we'll fish along that washboard and then we'll see if we can poke our nose up and fish a couple of these trays. So we've had a few bites and a few lost fish. So see if we can't put one in the boat. Let's fish out there. Zero for three so far. What happened there is a fish got me around a pole. <laughs> mm. Joys of rack fishing with an ultra light rod. You stitched me up proper here, Pat. Well, Ooh, a few fish here. That one that was sitting on that pole, man, as I came up, that was like a 38 forker or something. It was a proper one. Right. Got that one out. Not a bad one. Drop this one over the side. 
Not a massive fish, but good test out here in the racks. All right, so not a, not a massive one, but first one we've actually managed to keep in the boat this morning. Ate, ate that rescue critter off the pole. We've just come into the, into a set of racks here that seems to have a bit of life in it. So we'll keep going down, see if we can't catch another one. Found a little patch of fish, seems to be. So we're at basically the furthest out section of racks. We've got a, a lot of racks up in this bay here and it's the run out, end of the run out tide. So what I think's happening is that tide's pushing all those fish, the, the inner racks are getting very, very shallow, too shallow to take the boat in. And all the fish that have been up there on the high tide are starting to flow out. So we've, we've had quite a few bites just in this little area and basically we're just working the outside poles. So um, we'll keep, uh, keep going along and hopefully we'll uh, get a few more bites. All right, so a bit of a slower morning, but um, just going to make a little bit of a change. So the fog's lifted, nice and sunny now. It's um, running tides, probably an hour or so into the running. So I'll run back down the river a bit, try and fish a bit of a uh, bit more faster flowing water, find this current, and see if we can't catch a few fish. So. What it is, fuddy, little fuddy. I've got the mega live pointed out in front of me. I'm looking about 60 to 70 feet. There's a big school of brim up on the on a shallow bit of rock here. So see if we can't uh, get a few to play the game. A fat old winter brim. A little wave minnow on a 1.8 number one bait junkie chick head. Not a big one again, but nice little winter brim. All right, so we're just fishing basically a, a little high spot. So it's deep on the other side. It comes up to about 16 feet and drops off again. And the current's coming over the top of it. So we're sitting off the back of it and uh, just bouncing a little plastic on the bottom. So I've got a wave minnow on on a 1.8 and I'm just hop, hopping it along the bottom. So there's a kind of hard, rocky kind of bottom, so you can feel it bouncing along and you're just lifting it off and dropping it back down. So quite a simple technique, but really good way to catch brim and flatties and you, you get the odd dewy and stuff as well, so. Let's see that one. Giving a good little scrap for themselves, is it? All about the same size, but they're all just thick. Not a, uh, not a massive one, but they're all pretty thick. Pulling pretty hard, so check it back. All right, so one of the biggest benefits of Jaybraid Expedition is uh, the brand new silicon coating. And you might be familiar with this from some other Daiwa braids, like our Saltiga line, but it's the first Jaybraid to have a silicon coating. And, one of the biggest benefits of silicon coating in braids is the fact that it makes the braid hydrophobic, meaning it repels water or doesn't absorb water. Um, there's a couple of really big benefits to that. One is it doesn't absorb the water, but also the silt and the sediment that's in the water. 
Uh, and a lot of what makes braid wear out over time, and you, and you might have seen, you know, braids you've used in the past, ooh, there's a bite, go um, fuzzy over time. But by repelling the water, it doesn't absorb that silt in the sediment. So you don't get that wear over time. So it's a more durable braid. It'll last a bit longer. Um, but the other one is it doesn't become waterlogged. So after a long fishing session, you know, you still get the improved casting performance. And when fishing a bit deeper water, like we are here, uh, or even, you know, vertical jigging or something in the salt water, you get more direct line contact because it doesn't uh, take into account as much uh, water and it doesn't drag as much. It's a nice little winter brim. Not a huge one, but it's probably the biggest one we've had so far this morning. Right on cue. All right, so we're going to make a little spot change. We've stopped on that reef and had a pretty good little session there fishing some uh, uh, deeper fish, but um, we've pulled up that and we're going to go back to some racks. So we're going to go down the front of the system, try and find a bit of clearer water. Uh, a bit more visual, a bit more fun. Pick up the risky critter again and throw it around those poles and see if we can't catch a big one out of the racks to give that jaybraid expedition a good test. So, so far, um, really, really liking it. It's super smooth, super slick, and because that silicon coating, you notice that, you know, fishing deep, there's no water dripping off your line. Your casts are just um, really nice, even after a you know, long time soaking it um, down there. So, really enjoying it so far. We'll go uh, test it out in some more racks. Let's do it. See them under there, they're just you gotta make them come out for it. That's the problem. They're all in here, mate. Yeah, he's still there. Get off that oyster. Okay. The old reel under the water trick. There he is. Yep, there he is. Oh, get off there. Get off there. One extraction. So I had the braid all wrapped up in the uh, poles there. Not a big fish, but good test for the expedition braid. It's about 500 brim here, so we'll put him back. Now that we're a bit closer, we've got a bit better chance of getting one out if we do actually hook one. That was a big one, holy moly. Last spot for the day, we'll head into the last spot, so we'll just went up a little shallow creek and fished a couple of racks and saw plenty of fish, but really spooky. So we'll go back into the main river and Fish a few more racks, one rack that I really like to fish, and we'll uh, we'll see how we go. Finish the day off strong, eh? So when I'm fishing plastics like this, I really like to use a high-vis braid, and the Expedition high-vis orange, really nice colour for this, makes it really easy to see when the line's lying on the water. You can see those little bites, um, but it also comes in metered multicolour as well, all the way up to PE 8, 90 pounds. So whether you're a light tackle estuary guy like myself, or you're into your offshore blue water, there's a jaybraid expedition to suit, so we'll fish down another couple of these racks, and we can't. We'll uh, see if we can't get another fish. Buddy, there you go. There's your dinner. There you go, mate. Dinner for the cameraman. There you go, mate. Thank you, Tom. There you go, mate. And give you a too close a look at this one. Upcoming bait junkie shape. And yeah, that's enough. That's a good one. Ah! I had him. 
prototype. It works. I lost it. Damn. All right, so not the fairy tale finish we wanted. Lost the uh, last fish we hooked there on the prototype bait junkie. But happy to know that that gets some bites. Um, we've been using it for a little while now, so pretty happy with that one. It'll come out in the future, but overall pretty good day in the Hawkesbury. Not the prime season to do some rack fishing here. It's the middle of winter, but good chance to come out and show you the new Jaybraid expedition. So nothing uh, really tests line like the racks. Probably a bit undergunned in the, the leader department today, and but we'll come back with maybe with some heavier rods and uh, heavier leader and give it another crack another day. But overall, Jaybraid expedition, Really like that, that orange colour makes it super easy to see, so that's alright. It'll wrap up today and we'll, uh, we'll come back with some heavier gear and see if we can get revenge.